Welcome, welcome, welcome to The Artist Tree. I am Lonita, your host, and I am here today with two of my favorite people, um, executive director and co-founders of Kansas City, Kansas' very own The Alcott Art Center. Thank you, Chris Green and Chuck Hi. Green, <laughs> for joining us today. Um, let's go ahead and get straight into the Alcott Art Center. The Alcott is an art center, as it says in its name. What kind of arts are we talking about? Is it performing arts or visual arts? It's, it's both. It's all, actually. It encompasses all of the arts. We have the visual. We have two galleries. We have a theater. We do productions, plays. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a recording studio in the process. Of, recording of, for musicians? Yes. Right. Wow. yes. Yeah. Okay. In the process. We're still working on that. Okay. Um, but any anything that you can think of that the arts encompass, that's what we try to do. And so when you say you have a gallery, let's talk about the structure of the, the Alcott Art Center because I'm trying to visualize how you can have both a gallery and a theater. Can you talk to me a little bit about the building itself? What's it, what's it like? Well, it's an old elementary school. Mm -hmm. uh, it was built in 1923. Mm -hmm. We have just transformed the, the classrooms into... The galleries. We have mm -hmm. the two galleries. They're just you walk in. It looks still looks like a classroom, <laughs> except the chalkboards are covered up. But mm -hmm. um, it still is very reminiscent of it being a a, a classroom in itself. We've got the tall ceilings, but we do have track lighting in the galleries so that mm -hmm. it's got the professional atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know, but okay. uh, pretty wonderful. The theater. It has it has uh, theatrical lighting, which happened to come from the college here. Oh, very they, nice. They donated it to us when they upgraded their lighting. They uh, they said, oh, well, you're a new, th new entity that they were ready to donate their old equipment to us. Excellent, excellent. Okay, and so let me ask, when you do a production of a play, are the galleries open at the same time? Or, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm asking, do the art, will the art complement the artist's Painting, sculptures, I'm assuming it's all of that. Sure. Does it relate to the play, to the production that you're doing? It, it does at times, mm -hmm. but uh, not always. Mm -hmm. it, it depends on really who we can get at that point. But we always try to make sure that when we do have a production that the galleries are open. Mm -hmm. When we have art exhibits, we try to have entertainment there. We always try to make sure that there's more than one thing happening artistically in the at building at the same time yes. okay. right nice. that way there's a lot of crossover you know mm -hmm. artists will meet other artists and then partnerships develop it, it's been really nice to see the way it it transforms so the Alcott is not just about uh, productions and the art itself but bringing artists together is that a part of that's the main part of Alcott really is about bringing all the artists together you know, we have what we call a mutual respect environment. Mm -hmm. When people come in, we try to make sure that they know a little bit about each other, that they're not afraid to introduce themselves to each other. Nice. Uh, it opens doors. And at that point... It facilitates professional relationships. It really yes. does. And so have any of the artists that have met through you collaborated on something down... Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. And and more, actually. Mm -hmm. Some have even gotten married from, from meeting each other at the oh, art Oh, really? <laughs> so it's not just the artistic, it's oh, the real so world. Oh, so I need to come hang out at the art <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> You might find that special someplace. But, you know, and uh, as, besides the art galleries and the theater, we've mm -hmm. also got a dance room with the mirrors down one wall and uh, a ceramic studio. And recently we were donated... Uh, some really nice stained glass supplies. Supplies, the supplies to be not able. windows. No, no, no. no. We, we will eventually put some stuff in the windows from mm -hmm. it, but next year we'll be able to offer stained glass classes. Oh, so you're teaching yes. how? Yes. To, wow. Yes. So you guys are also an educational facility. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So where do we find out how to enroll in classes at the Alcott? I mean, do you have an online presence? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have a website. You can go to the website, alcottartcenter.org, mm -hmm. and check out everything is on there, from uh, the classes that we, that we offer to the, the productions that are going on, mm -hmm. the artists that are exhibiting, or there's a lot of information of past uh, events that we've done sure. or the showcases that we've done, that, sure. you know, all the information on there. Nice. And then there was one thing that I was curious about, 
that Alcott gets its name from author and feminist, I would say, uh, Louisa May Alcott. She, uh, I guess her best work would be Little Women. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about the commonality between the Alcott and this famed author. Uh, to me, it's that perseverance, because mm -hmm. we definitely, you know, it, it's a struggle. She was definitely struggled in, yes. her, in her time. She said, uh, was determined. She it, said, I will work. I will do whatever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and even, you know, in that time, there were, women did not do any of that. Uh, or their names weren't out there. They were exactly. supposed to be in the house exactly. and, and, and being the womanly role. Mm -hmm. and, and she took on she being wanted the a author job. and That's she wanted right. the job and she went out and, and volunteered in the hospitals mm -hmm. um, during the war. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, you know, and sold her, her, her stories to help support the family. So, I, you know, I mean, it's exactly what we do. I, we're just, we all band together and just support each other. I mean, it's not just one person doing it. It's, it's several people, right. you know, not only Chuck and I, but all the other volunteers that come right. in. And, and that was one thing that so everybody on your staff is a volunteer. Yes. Including the two of you. Yes. How do you do that? How do you get somebody 10 years to volunteer their time and their energy to this one cause? I mean, how do you inspire people to be involved? Well, and actually, it, it kind of goes from the way we were raised. You know, mm -hmm. you lead by example. Right. And the only thing that we have to give, you know, we, we're, we're not rich, so we don't have a lot of funds. But although we, we have put plenty in Alcott <laughs> over the years, uh, but we have our time and, and we have what we know. And we know that Alcott was supposed to be something to last generations, and it has. And you know, and for us, we want to instill in other people the fact that it's an institution. And, right. and we started the Art Center to be an institution that would, again, last for years and bring positive things into people's lives. And, and they see it when they come. Mm. And I think that it is um, an institution that is integral to the community that it serves. Um, what ways can the community give back to the Alcott? Because I know that you are there, you're providing education, arts education, a place for children to come when there may be nothing else for them to do. They can come and be at the Alcott and you do parades and everything. So what can we give back to the Alcott? Do you want to take that one? <laughs> just, I like that look. <laughs> just... They can give back to Alcott by coming in and participating. Mm -hmm. If if they're if they don't if they're not an actor or they're not an artist, if they can just come in and and view what we do, um, it'll they'll be hooked. Right. You know, I, I agree. once once you're in the door, you're going to be hooked one way or another. You're going to find something there that will will bring you back. Right. And if if you're not an artist, I will say the thing that brings me to the Alcott is the environment and the people, the spirit there, because it's so warm and so welcoming. And I was just like, I gotta have you guys on the show. <laughs> because coming there, I you know, I knew of the Alcott. I knew that it had been a school once upon a time, and then I'd start seeing these signs, Alcott Art Center, and I'm telling you, over the years I've thought so many times, I'm gonna stop in there and see what's going on, and I never did. And then there was a uh, audition mm -hmm. for sure. a play, and I, my son thinks he's an actor, so <laughs> we came in, and he's been talking about it ever since, when are we gonna go, how, you know, and we've been trying to get involved with your events, uh, which we will, and we'll talk about that later in the show. Sure. Um, but I want to talk about the volunteerism. Your children and your grandchildren are also involved. So this is not just uh, a business. It's a family affair. Right. What does that, having the Alcott, mean to your family? Well, it, it's brought culture into our lives Mm -hmm. Like we would have never dreamt. Mm -hmm. You know, when we started, I mean, Chris and I, the only things we had ever been in as far as plays was in high school. Right. And, you know, once it all started and started, started evolving and having the other things, you know, our kids, 
they're part of our lives, so they seen what we were doing firsthand, and um, they would come up and and volunteer their time to clean, to build, you know, you name it. And the grandkids, as they grew up, it's just always been part of their life. They've never known anything other than Alcott being there, and they know that we give of our time. And so when they go up there, I mean, they work. Right. They're Alcott representatives. We've literally <laughs> printed cards for them oh, to nice. take out, and, you know, and they can hand out. <laughs> and we're out. talking babies with well, business cards. In, in, in <laughs> elementary school, literally, yes. they, we printed their cards and they took them to school. So proud to mm. hand it to their teacher and tell their teacher, this is, this is what I do. Sure. I help with this, this, you know, at, at eight years old, they're telling teachers and, and when they come in the building, patrons so, come in the building, the kids, they'll take them, oh, come, come here, I'll show you where to go. Right. Um, they'll they'll give them a tour of the place. And, so you they know. are not only, you know, volunteers and this is like teaching them entrepreneurship exactly. and marketing and that's excellent. Yes. Starting them young. <laughs> And Although they don't understand all of that yet, <laughs> right? you know. They will sink in one Yes, yes. <laughs> and so you guys um, are married. Yes. And you guys have been doing this together for 10 years. What's right. that been like? Well, there's, it's like anything. I mean, Chris and I, we've been married for 31 years. Mm -hmm. And so we've learned how to get along. Uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's better than others. Right. But, you know, it's like any marriage. But uh, with the business... Uh, I've been disabled for a number of years, mm -hmm. and so there's been a lot of one-on-one -on -one time at home, mm -hmm. and uh, then, you know, you figure Alcott into it, and it's one of those things. You just, you learn how to get along, and you overlook the little things to make sure that the bigger picture happens every time. Okay, and as a couple, do you guys own the Alcott, or? No. No. No, I, and I know a lot of people think that we do. And, and mm -hmm. just to be clear, you know, I mean, even though you're, you're talking about Chris and I, um, there's so many people that are involved with Alcott and our board of directors. Mm -hmm. We still have board members that are co founders that are still with us. And Excellent. they are a big part of what we do and, and who we are. Okay. But when we started, mm -hmm. we, we literally had to start an organization. Mm -hmm. We were a, a committee of CABA who originally bought the building when the school board decided to sell it okay, so that it wasn't a prison and, and I know you'll oh, get to so that. So it wasn't a prison. Yes, we're going to talk about that but we're going to take a quick break. Okay. When we come back we're going to talk about the almost fate of the Alcott. Sure. Thank you so much. We will be right back speaking with Chris and Chuck Green, Executive Director and Co-Founders of the Alcott Art Center. This is not a race. On the road to financial independence, the winners are the ones who stay the course. Learn more about securing your financial future and choose to save. It will pay off in the long run. Welcome back to The Artist Tree. I am your host, Lonita Cook, and we are talking with guests in the studio today, Chris and Chuck Green. They are executive director and co-founders of the Alcott Art Center. And when we went for our break, we were talking about who owns the Alcott. Can you go ahead and elaborate, elaborate on that for me, please? Sure. When we started, we, we formed a foundation. It's called mm -hmm. the LM Alcott Art Center Foundation. The LM Alcott? Mm -hmm. Right. And at that point, we bought the building from the other group that had bought it from the school board, which is Central Avenue Betterment Association. Mm -hmm. And we had to form a nonprofit in order to buy it from them. And when we made the purchase, as I said, a lot of people think Chris and I own it, but the building literally is in the hands of and the owned foundation by the foundation, itself. which is actually ran and governed by the neighborhood mm. around the Alcott Art Center. I didn't know that. Yes. And so you said that you bought it from the association that bought it from the school board. So mm -hmm. it started out as, a, as an elementary in 1923, right. and it's had many transformations over the years. It has. You said something interesting before we went to break, that it almost ended up a prison. Right. When the school board decided to sell the building, uh, one of our neighbors called and said, you know, you guys got to get involved. We got to stop it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's like, what? Right. And he said that a minimum security prison was going to buy the building from the school board 
and housed 200 men and with ankle bracelets. Mm -hmm. They could roam the neighborhood freely until 11 o'clock at night. And at that time, and we're talking, you know, uh, 1999, 2000, mm -hmm. there was a lot of problems with our area. The, mm -hmm. the crime was rampant. The drugs and prostitution on 18th Street mm -hmm. was rampant because there was a no-tell motel, which is what we always called it. Right. And I remember that. the old truck stop was there. Right. So there were a lot of bad things in our neighborhood, and uh, we didn't need a prison. That was the last thing right, we needed. Right, the last and, thing. And can Any you imagine? Needs, right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A residential right. neighborhood with minimum security prison just doesn't So fly. how did you guys get in there and stop this thing? Was it just simply, we're going to form this foundation and take over this building? Is that? Well, no, it actually started a little slower than that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, when he called, you know, we started calling everybody. Right. Trying to get as many people involved to go to the school board and ask them not to sell it so to the prison. So it was the school board that had the authority here. Yes. It was yes. not uh, our government or... It oh, was, no. Right. Mm -hmm. No. And so we went to the school board with several people, mm -hmm. uh, I think probably close to 100 people, mm -hmm. and along with uh, CABA and, and Donnelly College and some other neighborhood groups, Fabulous. and several people, including our own neighborhood, and we asked them to help us put something positive there. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point, we asked them to rescind the, the purchase mm -hmm. and not sell it to the prison and give us an opportunity to help them market it. Right. And so at that point, that's when uh, everybody got involved and CABA got the building. We endorsed them as a neighborhood, but they were in there for a year mm -hmm. and couldn't really find a good direction, a good solid direction. Mm -hmm. The uh, executive director at the time, her name was Mary Neal, mm -hmm. she called our neighborhood back in and said, you guys got to get involved. They need your help. So we went up, we f joined their organization and formed a committee. Right. Uh, and at that point, you know, here again, uh, a number of us put money into advertising to try to rent it out for office space, you name it, and it just didn't work. Uh, and then a group came in and they were a dance school. A di okay. And wanted to put their dance school in there. And at that point, you know, our committee, we, we had a collective light come up over our heads. Ah. Say so the arts, that's the perfect thing. You <laughs> right. Know, it's it's non-controversial. You know, we can right. do a lot of things positive with of it. Of course. And, and that's how the Alcott came that's to how be. We, yeah. The birth of the Alcott dance studio. Yeah. And band. then at that and point. Let me ask you, are yeah. you guys born and raised here? Are you from Kansas City? I am. You are. I am. And mm -hmm. Chris is actually uh, a trans dot. I'm a trans dot, okay? <laughs> but but I was, I've was. i been told that I've lived here so long, I'm officially a dot now. Okay. So. Okay, you're in. I'm you got dot. enough brownie points, I'm a dot. you're in. Okay. That's right. She's from Independence. <laughs> yes. Oh, hey. Is it but Kansas City, you know, area? So that's yeah, right. right. And you guys really did save the neighborhood. And... You guys still give so much. I want to talk about, uh, you said that you are a foundation, not-for-profit foundation, 501c3, but you're also a charitable foundation. And that means that you not only give to the community. I don't want to get emotional about this because it's so touching to me. Um, you guys don't just, you know, serve the community that you're in, but you help other not-for-profits. Right. Um, one of the ones that I thought was impressive was the Hope Line, mm -hmm. which is through Verizon Wireless, and they donate refurbished cell phones mm -hmm. to victims of domestic right. violence. How did you get involved with that? Well, actually, Verizon contacted us and wanted to be a sponsor, mm -hmm. and they told us you know, what they had to offer us in, a, in the way of a sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And uh, they wanted a partnership, uh, a partnership with us in trying to help victims of domestic violence, and that was through Hopeline. So anytime somebody comes to Alcott, they can bring their old unused cell phones and help a whole lot of people by doing it. Verizon refurbishes them and sends them out to, to people that just don't have the access to them. Wow. Wow. And then you also collect food and clothes for, it's the Central Avenue Center for Hope. Mm -hmm. Right. How yes. long have you been doing that? We've been doing this for three years now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three years. Uh, we we do a zombie prom every year. Mm -hmm. And the, the Kansas City zombie 
zombies. They do a walk for hunger mm -hmm. twice a year. One uh, last fall was their uh, their commitment to to donate it to uh, Central Avenue Center of Hope. Mm -hmm. They got in contact with us. We helped them deliver the the all the food to that. We've just kind of taken that on ourselves now. And so now you're a site. And, yes, where... we're a site. You can drop off food, mm -hmm. but not only food. It could be. Um, it could be clothing. Mm -hmm. It also can, can be the personal items, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, you know, right. deodorant, soap, things like that. Wow. Because the, the Center of Hope also, you know, they have showers for them for the homeless to come in and, and shower. Mm. Uh, the clothes would help them. I'm not sure if they'd launder, but, you know, at least they would have a clean set of clothes to sure. take with them. Uh, things like that. And so some one of us could just walk into the Alcott anytime and say, hey, take this off my hands. Right. Might, they might call first and, and set up an appointment. Okay. Okay. okay so, so just walking in. Cause <laughs> or if we're coming to an event. An event, yes. Absolutely. Then we can. Yes, exactly. Nice. Uh -huh. nice. And then I, I know that in our conversation before, you said sometimes when people drop off clothes that you um, – go through the clothes for costume pieces oh, yes. because you get everything for the center through donations, through donations. as well. Can you talk about um, a little bit more about how the community can support the Alcott and be involved in donating, volunteering, anything else? That well, actually, right now, you know, we've been talking to some historical preservation people about trying to restore the Alcott. Mm -hmm. And it appears that they've ran out of money right now. Mm -hmm. And we've never really gone for grants. You know, we've tried to be a self-sustaining nonprofit, mm -hmm. which is kind of unusual. I mean, a lot of them are going to find out now what it's like themselves. But mm -hmm. uh, when we started, we've seen a lot of nonprofits that as soon as their funding ran out, they had to they shut down. They were over, right. Yeah, right. so we didn't want to be but in You guys have been building your muscles. You know how to. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But right now, since we haven't uh, depended on grants, mm -hmm. we're at a point where we really need help in restoring mm -hmm. the building. Okay. You know, there's a lot of things on the facade. Uh, the windows need repaired. I mean, mm -hmm. granted, we're trying to put something together to, to get a grant sure. for brand new windows and, mm -hmm. and furnace and air conditioning and all that. But there are things that need to be immediately done sure. to the building. I know when people drive by, they think, and I've had it said recently, is that an abandoned building? You know, we put signs out and everything, but the outside has mm -hmm. just not gotten the attention that, it, that the inside right. has. We've tried to f build a foundation. We've tried to build an art center that people can use and love. Sure. And we've done that. But now... We definitely need the help on the facade. And when you say you need help, are you mean you mean manpower? You mean materials? You mean labor? You mean money? I mean all the above. All of the above. Absolutely, mm -hmm. all the above. I mean, and I know there's people out there that are uh, that love Kansas City, Kansas, right. like we do. I mean, that's really why we're there. We want to make sure there's something positive that people can be proud of in that neighborhood. And going back to the prison, can you imagine a prison across the street from the new Sunfresh? Right. <laughs> not, not a good thing. Right. Uh, the Alcott belongs. Yeah, the Alcott absolutely. belongs. But we want to make sure that other people have the same sense of ownership mm -hmm. that a lot of people do that, that interact with us now. And if they're not into the arts, they can still be into their community. They can help us restore the building and, and give it that sparkle that it once had. Excellent. So I am wanting to ask you about the artists that um, come to the Alcott, not just artists, but art groups. Mm -hmm. And there's one that originated there, the, the Trapdoor Theater. Right. I, I was reading that bio, and it was just very wonderful. It's a 14-year-old boy started this group, correct? He was yes. homeschooled. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, the other art groups that... Um, and, and when the community supports the Alcott, who they're supporting? Well, the art groups is actually we've got what we call an associate membership. Mm -hmm. And with that, uh, a group can come in and use the space ongoing throughout the year. They can call Alcott home. And we try to nurture them however we can. We, mm -hmm. we help them with our website, through Facebook, mm -hmm. and through the space, and whatever mentoring we can offer. 
but the homeschoolers have been an integral part of Alcott for a number of years now, mm -hmm. and Zach Weaver is who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. He's an incredible young man, and uh, the group Trapdoor Theater mm -hmm. is uh, it's a group of homeschoolers that literally they'll go to Fringe, they go out wherever they can and try to show people what a, a group of youngsters can put together. And you also have the Midlife Players, Midlife Players is a new group also this mm -hmm. year. Uh, they're a group of people that came in years ago to Alcott and performed and rehearsed for Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, but they're a group of uh, performers and artists over 35. <clears throat> okay. That, uh, <laughs> they went out and they found that recently they'd go out to audition for parts for 35 and, and up and parts and they'd be cast there. to younger people. Of course. So yeah. they decided they're going to do it themselves. And then I would say um, Shakespeare in the Parking Lot. That is another uh, event that you do annually, correct? Right. Yes. Okay. And um, of those, which would you say is your popular, most popular one? Well, the most popular one is going to be Shakespeare. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. And that's, it's actually to the point to where uh, call, val or call point. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of Kansas City, Kansas uh, tourist attractions. Nice. They've been trying to get us to move Shakespeare in the parking lot down there for a couple of years now. And uh, we struck a tentative deal mm. with them not to move Shakespeare in the parking lot, but to do Shakespeare at the point next spring. Nice. So we've got to work out all the details, but the city really wants us down there. And so we'll do We're going to be wrapping up. Okay. And I really want to thank you for joining us. A couple things. You guys have one big event that happens. Um, we were talking about the renovations to the building that you need. And heating and cooling system is one of those things, correct? And because you of the lack of heating for the Alcott, the production calendar ends October 31st. Sadly. With a bang, though. Yes. You guys have trunk or treat, right? Yes. Right. What is that? Um, I'm going to be there, but you can tell everybody else okay. what it is. Well, the trunk or treat is literally we take all of our props to the north lawn and we decorate the whole lawn to where the children can come and trick or treat at a safe environment and have a wonderful experience. We have tons of volunteers that come and when we set up the the area outside it has a theme well this year's theme is the monsters <laughs> so you know we're gonna work with that and have you know Fabulous. Lily and Herman and Grandpa and and hopefully have spot the dragon uh, but it's that's just, awesome it's, I used to watch the monsters every day so. <laughs> yes. and it's, it's just so much fun because um, we may only see these children once a year when they come to Trunk or Treat, mm -hmm. but they, we open the gates at 5 o'clock, they get to come in, and there's several little stations throughout the lawn that they get to go and get candy. They're going to get a lot of candy by the time they leave our lot, you okay. know. We can still use donations. Absolutely. Yes. And um, is there a cover for the event? No. no. It's, a, it's a free event. Mm. Um, Please bring your children dressed up in costumes. Um, we have face painter there. Her name is Cheryl Nance Durst, and this is her fourth year of fourth. Fourth, fourth <laughs> fifth year. Yeah. I don't know. She's wonderful. Hey. She works for the downtown library here in KCK. Awesome Always artist. Always donates and her time. She does one kid every three minutes. Wow. Starts yes. it starts at five thirty and ends at eight o'clock. Does not take a break. So she sees roughly. 60 to 70 kids that she can really do face painting on. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, it sounds like an excellent event. Like I said, I'm going to be there with my little ones. Um, before we go, uh, from the producers of the Artist Tree, we did want to go ahead and present you with a donation for the event. Oh, wow. And we'd like to go ahead and give that to you because oh, thank you so much. we believe in what you're doing. And well, thank you. So thanks again for having us, and thank you for joining us on The Artistry. We'll thanks. see you next time.